Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Dudon. Welcome to Trending Vegas. We're talking about the big stories flooding your social media channels in recent weeks. I'm joined by a portion of our city's social media team, including Natasha Shahani and Hello. Jace Radke. Thanks Ahoy. for joining us, guys. Ahoy. <laughs> and our social influencer guest today has a big following, especially on YouTube. Ashley Williams joining us today. Thanks so much for being here. I'm excited. So I don't think I've ever had a YouTuber on, so tell us about your YouTube channel. Well, that's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> um, my YouTube channel is primarily dedicated to homeschooling um, and just getting information out about that, kind of breaking down some of the stereotypes around it and sharing how we do that. Right, and it's called? Grace and Grit on Grace YouTube. And grit. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what gave you the idea to start this YouTube channel? Was there not anything out there like it and you were able to capitalize on it? Yeah, I mean, quite honestly, when I was looking for information as I was kind of considering this method of schooling for my family, there really wasn't anybody who I related to. I found a lot of people who lived in very rural areas, a lot of people who had you know, 15, 20 kids, and there just right. wasn't anyone that felt like me that I could connect with. Um, and so that was kind of the motivation to start sharing was to help people see that homeschooling is becoming more and more popular. It's not as weird as it once was. There's right. tons of options out there and to just kind of share and hopefully help other people. And I know that in Nevada, homeschooling is bigger than people realize, but you have a lot of followers from all over the country, it seems like, that are constantly asking you questions. You do pen pal things with the kids. Talk to me about that. Yeah, this it's taken on a life of its own. I had no idea that all of these different opportunities were going to happen, but it's been really cool to kind of see the success play play out. Um, yeah. From just putting myself out there, it's kind of scary to share your life and your journey, the real journey, not just the polished up journey right. um, on YouTube, especially when you're taking on something new. But I think a lot of people connect with the authenticity of it because I talk about the hard things, I talk about the good things. And um, yeah, it just started growing and growing and growing. And it's been it's been really cool. I mean, on top of it, you actually have to promote your YouTube channel on social media, so I've been showing you some Insta stories, but it's a lot of work to make these videos, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> How much of your time does it take, would you um, say? Well, when I first started out, it was a much more of a hobby kind of idea, but as it's grown and taken on a life of its own, it's definitely become a an actual job, which I know a lot of people don't think social media influencing or marketing is a technical job, but it truly is. I mean, from filming the content to coming up with the content ideas to editing it, and then combined if you're working with a brand or a sponsor, you have to send it in for approval. They're never happy on the first time. You have to come back, refilm it, timing, deadlines, posting, making sure that you're posting regularly because that's a huge part of being successful. Yeah. Preach. So. Yeah. 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 Well, like our social media <laughs> Like, yes. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yes, girl. Okay, well, we're glad and you're And for hours, rest. maybe 25, 30 hours a week. It's wow. almost a full-time I mean, thing now. On top of homeschooling her kids, so pretty much this is super mom joining no. us today. No. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. Thank you. All right, guys, well, we have a lot of trending topics to get to. Unfortunately, we're starting with two more mass shootings in our country. Everyone was shocked to see the Walmart shooting in El Paso, but shocked even more to learn there had been another mass shooting in Dayton, Ohio. Here's a look at some of the social media we saw breaking. Authorities say the 21-year-old white man accused of carrying out the deadly mass shooting at an El Paso Walmart confessed after surrendering and said he had been targeting Mexicans. This one kind of what we all felt. I went to bed horrified by a mass shooting and woke up horrified by another mass shooting. This is a beautiful picture outside of the memorial in El Paso. Beautiful El Paso sunset over the Walmart memorial. I turned on the TV this morning and saw nine dead. I said to myself, last night they said 20 dead in El Paso. Then I read the headline shooting in Dayton, Ohio. Almost couldn't believe it, but actually I can. And here's another El Paso strong thing. A lot of things that we saw during the one October shooting here. And guys, I have to say, full disclosure, I am from El Paso and I took this shooting really hard. I didn't think it was gonna hit me as emotionally hard but it did. I don't know if it's because it's my hometown that probably has a lot to do with it, but I have noticed that I am hesitant, maybe because I am Hispanic, maybe because it's just one too many and my bucket's full. I'm scared. I am nervous to go out in public. Is it just me? How are you guys feeling? What are you all seeing? Natasha, let me start with you. I think those, I was on vacation actually when all of those happened. So we got news whenever we got 
service. So it was really hard to, see, you know, to be mm -hmm. kind of away and seeing one after the other. And it is scary. You know, I was in London after London was bombed like 10 years ago. And I remember just being like heightened, like everywhere I go, oh, could this person like have a gun or could this person have a bomb? And then with everything, you know, September 11th and mm -hmm. all of the recent mass shootings and to go through October 1st here, like I, I think you, how can you not go somewhere and wonder, is this the last time I get to go somewhere? Right. Which is hard, but on the same time, like, you can't live life like that either, because then you're not going to want to do anything at all. So it's really hard, and it's just, it's sad, because after October 1st, you're like, I hope this is the last time we have to do this, and it's not. So far from it. Ashley, what are your thoughts? What are you seeing on social media? I just saw a ton of support coming from Vegas to El Paso because we all know what that that experience and how that changed the city. And so I was just so impressed with everyone sharing on social media, you know, that Vegas stands with El Paso and right. all of that. Because truly after something that horrific, that's really all you can all, all you can really do is just lend your support and your love to the people that are grieving and the families and the victims. Right. And you know, my aunt was really, my aunts, plural, were really upset that this was happening. My entire family lives in El Paso. And I said, you know, the one thing that's going to come out of this that's really going to touch your heart is just the love that's going to, you're going to fall in love with your community all over again. Mm -hmm. And I actually got a text message last night from one of my aunts saying, you were right. I am so in love with this community. I've never felt stronger about El Paso. And I'm so glad we're here. Jace, what are you seeing on social? Yeah, I mean, it, it is like that, like Ashley was saying, you know, we got that from Orlando, you know, when we had October 1, mm -hmm. Orlando sent us a bunch of stuff and it really helps. Um, I think that is a good a good thing. You know, you see this this incident and it's horrible, but you do see this vast outpouring. So I think it makes everybody feel better. I think the other thing we're seeing is, you know, the mayor, Mayor Goodman here in Las Vegas, she was one of 200 plus mayors that signed a letter to Congress through the U.S. Conference of Mayors basically asking Congress to do something. Mm -hmm. um, what that something is, I think, is the million dollar question because obviously this issue gets political. Um, and I think, you know, the mayor's expressed her frustration with the gridlock and the politics in Washington on this. And I don't know what the answer is. I'm sure the mayor doesn't know, but she wants there to be a dialogue. It was basically her message that there needs to be a dialogue on this to try to find some way to stop these types of things from happening. Absolutely. Um, the one thing I thought was interesting, and let me go to this social really quickly. Um, this is from Channel 13. Here's a part of our original interview with Connor Climo. Climo, I don't know how to say his last name. He was doing a patrol back in 2016 in the Centennial Hills area, and he was patrolling. He was just arrested because he had plans to attack other groups, LGBTQ groups, Jewish groups, and it's just scary. And since then, this past week, more people have been arrested for these plans to carry out these mass shootings. So I am trying really hard to not be nervous. I don't like to go shopping with my husband right now. I don't want to take the same plane as my husband right now. I feel like we should be separate. I'm hoping I can get over that because you're right. I don't think we should live like that, unfortunately. I think because I've had a shooting here in Vegas and then one in El Paso, both which are my homes, I just feel like, what? So hopefully uh, we can just lend our support like you saw, Ashley, just keep giving our support to people in El Paso and Dayton, Ohio. All right, guys, let's move on to the next topic. If you notice, Project Neon is complete, and while you'd think everyone would be thrilled, well, you'd be very, very wrong. All right, here's a little bit of that. After over three years of construction, Project Neon is finally ending. Here's this tweet. Hooray for completed road projects in Las Vegas. 63 lane miles of new paving, 29 new bridges, and 10 miles of drainage improvements. Project Carpool Lanes, I mean, Project Neon is pretty much a wrap. Guess who's that from? That's from Ken Smith, who's been very vocal about his dislike for the carpool lanes. And then we have this, well, they just spent three years improving this interchange. Well done, guys. You can see he is stuck in traffic. So I'll go ahead and start with this one. I love it. I think it's great. I am not an opponent um, of HOV lanes. I think they're great. <laughs> They don't need to be 24 hours in my opinion, but I, I really, really like Project Neon. I'm glad to see 
that it's complete. I think what, for me, the realization that people, people think construction is just gonna end one day, it will never no. ever end. It's just, it's just not the world. <laughs> Ashley, what are your thoughts? I personally love the HOV lanes. Yes. Um, and I, anyone who complains about traffic in Las Vegas needs to think of living in California where it takes mm -hmm. 35 minutes yeah. to make it two miles. We're all very spoiled here. Um, but I personally love it for my commute you know, out into the Southern Highlands area, all the way into the far Northwest area. Yeah. 30, 30 minutes across the whole entire city. Right. I think it's awesome. Are you guys still getting complaints on your end? What are you guys seeing? Well, one, we weren't responsible for Project Neon. Let's just clarify <laughs> that right now. Um, it's always something like, why do you do this? What, you know, they just want something to complain about. Right. Um, but personally, I think it's great. I was driving through, you know, I live and work in downtown, so I kind of was driving past the Charleston 15 in the evening, and there's like these new lights, and it, you yeah. know, under the corridor where the bridge is, and it's just, it's beautified the area. Right, there's this picture right here that's up, and it says, monitoring the HOV lane along southbound US 95 at Cheyenne Avenue, it appears to be underutilized. So my thing is maybe you all should carpool and utilize, or have some kids. <laughs> there's Jace. options, yeah, I mean, complaining is really a fun thing to do, I guess, on the uh, interwebs and stuff, but, uh, <laughs> It works pretty good from my, you know, I drove down there this weekend. My house is in the northwest. I came down 95, and always when you used to come down 95, you'd hit I-15 there at the Spaghetti Bowl, and you'd slow to a crawl. Now it dumps you in down by Sahara, so it right. merges it further down, and it worked for me. I think it's great. What The only thing I question, you guys might not know this. I'll probably have to call someone over at NDOT. There is an exit that I accidentally got off because on the 15, it's like the neon gateway. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. What does that go to? That has been a question we've received on social and okay. I always just tag Project Neon, but I cannot remember what they've said. Cause I've noticed that okay. too and I was like, what does this mean? Yeah, I accidentally but, got off and said, well, where am I? And why <laughs> is this called the neon yeah. gateway and where does it go? So I will I call, know. I'll call NDOT and I'll put it on Twitter. So if you want to follow me at Vegas Mel D. I'll get you guys the info, because <laughs> I want to know. Okay, guys, <laughs> finally we're talking football, but we're actually talking stadiums. Our stadium for the Raiders has officially been named Allegiant Stadium. I have to admit, I was laughing at some of the social media posts. First, here's the announcement. Introducing Allegiant Stadium. Here's this one. The Las Vegas Stadium will now be known as Allegiant Stadium as the Raiders announce a naming rights deal with Allegiant Air. From the sun, Allegiant expects to grow into newfound spotlight with Las Vegas Stadium deal. <laughs> this one was funny. Las Vegas Stadium, it'll be open on Sundays, Tuesdays, and maybe Fridays, maybe. And then there's this one. Will they charge extra for bags? <laughs> and so, Jace, let me start with you. What were your thoughts when you heard that Allegiant was gonna be the name? I mean, I think it's, I've seen some chatter on social. It's nice that it's a local company. You know, that's a Las Vegas, Nevada-based company. Um, it's the, the money is crazy. I mean, it's like, it hasn't been officially reported because right. they don't have to, but the things I've seen say between 20 and 25 million for 30 years. So. Each year. Each year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. So, uh, but then again, it's a $1.9 billion stadium. So that's how much those things cost. I'm, I'm more worried beyond the name of, you know, what happens on a Sunday night when there's a Raiders game, a Knights game, and the traffic going back to Los Angeles. That, that's going to be fun and interesting to see what happens to the traffic then. Has Allegiant said anything about maybe doing deals for people coming out of LA or coming out of smaller towns if they have Raiders tickets? Do we know? No, but that's I'm marketing. sure there will be. <laughs> yeah. There'll be smart yeah. marketing with it. You know, they'll tie it together. I will say that I read an article in the RJ that talked about this is Allegiant Air 2.0 that they ran into all that trouble several years ago, but they've revamped things and they're really looking to, for marketing wise. What do you think, Ashley? What are your thoughts on it? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about the whole stadium to begin with, but it's happening. So I'm just like, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, call it that. But those HOV lanes will be real handy, like you <laughs> yeah. said, when everyone's leaving. I mean, That's true. it's going to be a lot. It's going to have a bigger impact than I think a lot of people realize. That's true. You're going to have to carpool to the games. Yeah. Do we know where we're parking yet at the games? That's still no. up in the air. Uh, yeah. Okay. So HOV lanes, maybe we can helicopter in, we can get together <laughs> yeah. and be dropped in 
the middle of the stadium. Natasha, what are your thoughts on the name? Um, I think people are just going to call it the Death Star because oh, that is okay. what people have been referring to it on social um, and the photos of like the actual Death Star from Star Wars and the stadium are hilarious. So if you haven't seen those, definitely look that up. So. I don't even know if it's going to be referred to as Allegiant Stadium right. very much, um, but the, the Allegiant did get a lot of backlash for, like, you know, I don't know how I feel about this, do I have to pay for extra legroom, you know, like right. stuff like that. So <laughs> how many people are going to continue those jokes? Only time will tell. If they're smart, they'll use that in their marketing. You know, they'll be like, they'll show the leg room at the stadium and be like, so, you know, they, there's That's ways true. to turn yeah. that around if they're smart. Especially on social media, yeah. right? You know, not necessarily a commercial it. ad. I do want to say that LBCVA okays $3 million for Pac 12 championship. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Everyone that I know is talking about the Pac 12 championship. We're going to use the stadium. It's Las Vegas. We do big events better than anybody, and now we have another venue to do them in. So, I mean, that stadium's going to get used between the Raiders, UNLV, Pac 12 championship. There's going to be more stuff there, too. We'll get a Super Bowl. Well, you know. I mean, and we're paying for it, right? Yeah. So, we better <laughs> use it. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. Ashley, thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, if you're in need of work, the city has a new program that could put you on the path to success when we come back. A closer look at Ward 5 Works.